it's Marissa from Little House Living. Um, today I was thinking since it's a cold and snowy day, it would be fun if we um, looked at some garden seeds because I know that always reminds me of summer and warm weather. And so um, I just recently wrote a blog post all about picking garden seeds and how exactly I do that and um, some of the bases that I go on. So I'll leave that down in the description box below so you can check that out. But today I wanted to show you a video of the seeds that I actually got for my garden. Um, so we are in South Dakota. We are about at 5,000 feet in elevation and um, we're in about a zone 4B, if we're lucky, <laughs> depending on what area of the property I put it in. Um, so I kind of plan all of my garden stuff closer to like the three, four zone, just in case. Uh, my garden kind of is actually in like a low lying area, so it tends to freeze there um, sooner. So I pick garden seeds that are um, have a, a shorter growing season and um, that do well in colder climates like that. Although we do get warm in the summer, um, it can definitely get over 100 degrees here in July and August. So anyway, I wanna show you what I got in the companies that I ordered from this time. So I have my big bag here. Um, normally I store my seeds in, I have like this airtight locking container, um, but I've been trying to collect these all together that I bought for this year, so they're just still in the package that I got some of them in. So let me pull some of them out and separate them a little bit by company. All right, so the first place that I ordered from was Baker Creek. Um, I've ordered with them for probably over 10 years now, probably longer than that. Um, I used to have really good luck with their seeds, not so much in the last couple years. I'm not sure what's been going on, but the germination rate has been really poor. Um, so I wasn't planning on ordering from them at all, but we tried some new seed varieties last year and they worked really well for us and I could only find them at Baker Creek. So I went ahead and I ordered those um, so we could have them in the garden. And it looks, I ordered some um, stuff for my greenhouse also. Um, that's gonna be new for me this year, growing in the greenhouse. So I felt like I could try some different seeds that I hadn't had before. Okay, so this is a, it's just a standard bush bean. Um, I have tried growing pole beans. They don't produce as well for me. Um, I like the bush beans better and I find these easier to pick from because sometimes I tend to lose the beans that are on the pole. So anyway, but what we found is that these red beans are super easy to spot, <laughs> um, which helps a lot like when the kids are picking beans with me. So it makes it much easier to pick than um, just regular green beans. And we really like them. They're really pretty. They're really uh, tender. They don't get like stringy or tough like some other green beans we've had. So I bought quite a few packets of those. Oh, I can't remember how many is in this packet. Minimum 40 seeds. So I'll plant one of my really big garden beds um, with these beans and we should have a pretty good crop of beans this year. All right, so I see that I ordered some burgundy okra. I'm really not sure why, <laughs> other than I probably thought it was just pretty. And we're gonna try it. I have not um, yet successfully grown okra here, so that'll be a new one for me. And then I've got two types of cucumbers. Um, we really like this kind because they're just, they're just really good. They don't get very big and they're really um, juicy. And then this is a pickling cucumber. We make all of our pickles. We don't buy any from the store. So I do not have any luck growing cucumbers here whatsoever. It's way too dry. Um, but I will have a hydroponic setup this year um, out in my greenhouse. So I know that cucumbers do really well hydroponics. So I'm gonna put these in the greenhouse and that's my plan for those. All right, so not sure what this is. I don't even remember what this is. Maybe, oh, this is probably the free seed that I got because usually when you order from Baker Creek, you get a free seed. So this is some kind of snap pea. Um, I guess we'll try it if we like peas. So the other big thing that I ordered from Baker Creek was these purple peas. 
Um, kind of the same idea as the, the red beans is we found that these were just really easy to pick because they're really easy to see, especially with peas. They're so hard because there's so many little, little vines and stuff growing all over. Um, so we really liked the purple beans last year, so or purple peas last year, so I bought some more for this year. Um, what I did last year is we ended up enclosing a section of our garden that used to be an exterior fence. So I took a bunch of dirt and piled it along the fence and I just screwed these up the fence. Um, so that worked really good. I'm gonna do it this year. I need a little bit more dirt in that area, but at some point this summer, I will do some garden tours and I'll show you where I have the peas growing. And then two more things here. I cannot remember why I ordered this lettuce other than it's pretty. I, I have, um, a tendency to order things that are purple and red. I just think they're really pretty and add different color to the garden. So that could definitely be why I ordered this one. I'm just trying to see. I'm not sure. So I could have, um, I did order some stuff from for my uh, hydroponic setup. So this could have been one of the things I was thinking for that also, but either way, it looks really pretty. I'm excited to try it. And then I have these white turnips. We grew these last year. They are, um, they're not like as, I don't know, what is the right word for a turnip? Turnips can kind of be very earthy, kind of like a beet. These are really sweet. Um, not as sweet as like a sweet potato or uh, something, but they're, they're really good and they grew really well here last year. So this was the only place I could find these white turnips. So that's what I got from there. So that is all I got from Baker Creek. Um, like I said, normally I order a lot of things from them. This was very mild compared to what I've done in the past, but I just have not had luck um, with their germination rates. So I'm hoping that the things that I got will turn out well this coming year. All right, moving on, grab another bunch here. All right, so this year I also ordered from High Mowing Seeds. I have ordered from them in the past, but not recently. Um, I ordered from them because they had some varieties that are supposed to do really well in really dry conditions. And we tend to be really dry here in the summer. It's really wet in the spring and really wet like in the early fall, late fall, um, but summer is really dry. So I'm trying to plan my garden around that fact that we don't, we have a short season, it's really dry um, and it can get cold <laughs> at, at any time pretty much. So um, let me just dig through here and see what I got. So I got uh, kind of my brassicas from them. Uh, this broccoli does really well for me. I start this in our little low tunnels that we have. Um, actually, I started inside and then I put the little plants out in the low tunnels in about um, early April and it does really well for me. And then I found, let's see, here's the, the cabbage and a cauliflower in here. Those are also some things that I do in the low tunnels. Um, I believe I picked this variety of cabbage for its storage abilities. Um, is, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm gonna put it up here so you can see it. But um, yeah, same thing with this. I started inside and then I transplant the plants into my little low tunnels that I have. And then this is a type of cauliflower. I don't have as much luck with cauliflower as I do with broccoli. Um, I'm not sure why, it just doesn't seem to grow as big or as well. But this is a kind that I haven't grown before. Um, and like I said, the stuff that I ordered from high mowing was supposed to be really good for dry areas. So I'm hoping that these seeds do well for us this year. Um, oh, I did order, it's, a, it's called a sprouting broccoli. So that would be more of like a, a broccolini type of broccoli and this is actually a purple one which is really cool um, we love broccolini especially in stir fries so we're really excited to try that again I will probably start this inside I don't know I did start um, broccolini inside last year and it didn't do well so maybe I will actually direct seed this into the low tunnels this year and see how well it does um, all right let me just dig through these all right, I ordered just one kind of carrots. 
Um, carrots do not do well for me here. I'm not sure if our soil is just too rocky and compact. I've tried to work on the soil and so far it hasn't been going super well, um, at least to make it really loose. I can grow beets really well, but carrots just don't seem to be able to um, grow super well. But this kind of carrot is uh, fairly short, so I'm hoping that like with the length it will still go grow into the ground. And then I feel like I got beets from someone else, but oh, and this one. So I got two kinds of beets here. I've got a golden beet, and then this is the candy stripe beet. We love both of these types of beets. Um, our family was not into beets at all until we tried the golden beets, which don't taste anything like a regular beet. They have just a little bit of the earthy taste, but not. They don't taste like dirt. <laughs> um, they're really good. And then this last year we tried these candy stripe beets, which are kind of a white with this really bright pink like circles inside of them. And they are so good. They're so sweet and they don't taste anything like a beet at all. There's no earthy taste to them. Um, we really love those. We grew some last year. And like I said, beets grow pretty well for me. So I'm really excited to plant those. I'm just gonna grab out. All right, I've got, um, this is just your basic pie pumpkin. Um, I am currently in the process of making some hugel culture beds or hugel culture rows, it's not a bed. Um, so that is where you kind of, you start by digging a trench. So you put the rotting logs inside of this trench and then on top of that, you can put um, like used animal waste. So every time we clean out the chicken coop, we've been putting that on top of the logs and we have tons of logs because we live in the woods. So that was really easy to come by. Um, now we're filling it with that good like composty type material. And then in the spring, we will cover that all over with dirt. And then I'm going to plant right into that. And the reason that they're supposed to be beneficial is that you're putting all of this good organic material into your bed. And so then like that should equate to more nutrients um, in the soil. But also what I've read is that if you water the logs before you cover them all up, they should kind of retain that moisture. They should just kind of suck it down. Um, and then in the same way that like a swale works, the water will come and it'll just kind of sit and then soak into the ground right where that um, ridge is at, where the hugelkultur bed is. So we're hoping that they do really well here. We have all the organic materials to make them. Um, I'm really excited to try them. But since they are not in my main garden, I don't want to plant um, things that like the bunnies will easily eat because we have quite a few um, jackrabbits around here. So I'm going to go ahead and plant um, pumpkins and then I'm going to plant some winter squash out on those culture beds and just leave them and let them go all summer and see what they do. And we're really excited to see um, how well it goes. So we, so far we've just created one of these beds. It's quite long. I, I would say at least at least 50 feet long. Um, and I'm using it as kind of a water break around our chicken coop. So it's gonna serve some dual purpose. And then I'm hoping that in the fall, um, we'll have plenty of the winter squash and the pumpkins for us, but then we'll also have some left over to feed the animals as well. So that's my goal with the Hugo culture bed. And that's why I ended up buying um, some seeds. And I'll show you some of the squash seeds that I got in just a little bit. All right, so here is another thing that I ordered. Um, I grew some sugar baby watermelons last year in our garden and they actually grew, which I was really surprised about. Um, I just threw the seeds in behind my pepper plants and so they got watered every time I watered the peppers and they grew up the garden fence and we ended up having a couple of them. So that was really fun. I wanted to do some more this year, so I bought the seed packet and we will see how those go. All right, the last couple of things that I bought, well, we'll talk about this first. So I am not gonna try to pronounce this one too, but you can see it here. Um, this is a very specific kind of zucchini that's supposed to grow really well in really dry conditions. Um, and it's only 58 days, which is really good for our um, climate also. So it's kind of a striped zucchini. Um, this is what I ordered for my zucchini this year. I didn't order the kinds that I normally get, uh, like the Black Beauty. 
um, or the straight neck squash. I just got this kind, so I'm excited and a little bit anxious to see how well it does. We eat a ton of zucchini in the summer and then I also dry it for um, use all winter. So I hope this does really well, but I'm excited for that. And then these last couple things from High Mowing are all some different kinds of greens. So we've got a kale and two kinds of lettuce here. Um, all of these things are also supposed to grow really well in really dry conditions. Um, I, that's exactly why I picked all of these different varieties. So hopefully you can see those on there. Um, I'm excited to try them and see how well they do. Again, this is my, this is my theory on trying the stuff that's really good for the dry um, climate, just because typically that's what we have. Now I could be totally wrong this summer and it could rain all summer long. Um, I don't know that that would hurt this stuff, but uh, anyway, it's supposed to grow good with the dry. All right, next company that I ordered from was Pine Tree and I order from them every year. They are out of Maine, and so their growing zones tend to be pretty similar to mine. Um, I just have to watch because they're a, you know, a wetter climate than my climate is here. So um, we grew some of this last year. This is a purple pak choy. It's really good. I got a green one also. Um, I will probably end up growing some of these actually inside. I'm about ready to start my hydroponics inside. Um, so I'll probably try some of this out in here. We really like this for stir fry. And then this is just another kind of kale. I bought this for the hydroponic um, bed. This is a pack of nasturtiums. Um, I like to plant these around the squash. I don't know if they actually provide protection against the squash bugs. We haven't had any yet, so um, I'm hoping that it will still work. Plus they're pretty and you can eat them. And when my kids get to eat stuff out of the garden, especially if it's something really cool like flowers, um, that just makes it all the more fun for them. So that's what I got from there. All right, and then I ordered two kinds of winter squash. I'm trying to remember. I do not remember why I ordered this orange magic at all. And then the carnival. Um, I think these are actually probably supposed to be pretty good for dry conditions. Most winter squash does okay um, in a dry condition, but these are gonna be going on the hugo culture beds um, because they're winter squash and I don't have any room for winter squash in the garden. So all of this stuff is going to go out there. So that was it that I ordered from Pine Tree. Um, typically I get most of my garden seeds from them, but this year since I'm trying the different varieties, that was all that I got from them this time. All right, last seed company, and that is Prairie Road Organic Seed. Um, they are out of North Dakota. I've never ordered from them before, but I really wanted to try to find some seed companies that were a closer proximity to me because then I knew that the seeds had been tested in something that was closer to my climate. Um, I ended up buying my garlic from a company in Nebraska and it was specifically um, made for or grown in Nebraska. So I'm hoping that it does really well here. I've had good luck with garden or garlic before. I didn't last year um, and I ordered a type of California garlic and it just didn't work out well. So I ordered, um, I think three different kinds of garlic. I planted that back, I think at the end of September, I wanna say maybe beginning of October. Um, out in the garden and also a type of shallots. Um, so I'm anxious to see how those do because I filled up two or three garden beds with that. <laughs> so um, it's okay because we tend to eat a lot of garlic, but um, I hope the new varieties do really well. All right, so anyway, this seed company is new to me, but I was really intrigued um, by the things that they had, especially um, these things, they have this little special seal on the packages and those are specifically um, created by this uh, Prairie Road Seed Company. So um, I'm excited to try them because I know that they were grown in North Dakota, which should be pretty similar to my climate here in the Black Hills. So this is a type of winter squash I got. Um, it is, like I said, it's uh, just, just, you can only buy it from 
um, this company, which is really cool. But this will be going on the Hugo Culture beds. Um, I don't know very much about this particular kind, but I'm just curious to see how well it will do, especially compared to the other types of winter squash I got, um, since it's more bred for this climate. All right, this is another one that was an exclusive one of theirs. Um, it's a red beet, which we don't normally, like that's not our favorite. <laughs> we like the uh, golden beets and the candy stripe beets. But since this one, again, um, was made for a northern climate, I really want to try it and see how it compares to the other beets and if it does better. Because if it does better, and even though it's a red beet, like, we can stand it. We can eat it. <laughs> Plus, um, beets store really good in the root cellar. So we can never have enough beets here. We love them. All right, this is another one that I ordered. I did not order very many tomatoes this year. Um, I have really bad luck starting them from seed. Um, I'm not sure why. It's just not one of the things that I do well with. So I tend to, to buy the plants anyway. And I did find someone last year um, that's just uh, down to the south of me here and they grow plant starts for tomatoes and peppers. So my intention is to buy a couple tomato plants um, from them instead of growing my own. But I did buy these two kinds of tomatoes. This one is an exclusive to this company. Um, this one isn't, but it is like, like the rest of this stuff, um, you know, made for a Northern climate. And my kids love eating these right off of the uh, tomato plants. So this one, it looks really cool. It's like super shiny. Um, so we're excited to try that one. And again, just kind of see how these compare to the other tomatoes that I'll get from the plant starts. Um, and hopefully I have luck germinating these and starting them inside because um, we really want to know how well they're going to do. All right, and then this is the one pepper that I bought this year. Um, we're not huge pepper eaters. And like I said, I have a really, really struggle with starting the plants. And if I don't start the plants inside for peppers and tomatoes, they don't have enough time to grow here but um, these were just so pretty. <laughs> so I ordered um, this sweet pepper melody and uh, we'll try them and see how well they do. And this is just a packet of zinnias. I just want them to be pretty around the garden. And then I also ordered um, some morning glories. I'm going to plant these along um, let's see, this would be the southern side of the garden and uh, I want them just to grow up the fence and be really pretty because the southern side of the garden borders our yard. So just a little extra decoration. All right, I ordered several packs of the golden um, wax beans from Prairie Road. Um, we really like these, again, kind of for the same reason as the red ones that I ordered from Baker Creek. They are really easy to find on the plant. And what I noticed last year, I only grew bush beans last year. I grew a green variety and I grew this yellow wax variety. And these tended to be more prolific for me than the green varieties that I've tried. So um, I ordered a whole bunch of those. Um, we eat lots of green beans. Uh, I try to can a lot of green beans every year so there can never be enough but so now I have a total of about six packs of green beans or yellow beans or red beans or whatever you want to call them um, but we know that those work good for us and then this is um, one of those kind of ever bearing onions that you plant you only have to you should only have to plant it once and then it just comes back every year in the spring um, I don't have any of these in my garden. I do have some chives that come back um, that were planted here. And so we use those a lot in like eggs and stuff, but um, we're hoping for something more of like, like the green onion um, that we can use for topping. And then I will probably freeze dry them. Um, but anyway, I would like to get these started in my garden so that we can have some of the green onions come up every year and don't have to do any work for them. All right, last thing I ordered, and this is a sweet Dakota Rose watermelon. Um, again, this is an exclusive to this company. Um, I was really excited about this seed, maybe more so than the rest of the stuff from, that I got from that company, um, because this says that it's a watermelon that grows in a northern climate and it prefers desert-like conditions, so you're not supposed to water it very much. 
Um, so we are gonna try this and see how it goes. I may end up um, putting this out on the Hugo Culture bed uh, just because I don't know that I'll have enough room for it in my garden. Um, I'm kind of limited for space as far as like trailing plants go, but um, I'm really excited to try these and see how well they do, especially since I bought um, the sugar baby watermelons and I was able to grow those last year. So I'd like to see how those compare to this one um, this year. So that is all of the seeds that I got for our garden this year. Um, I will probably end up buying things from the greenhouse too. We have some pretty good uh, little greenhouses down in the town that's closest to us. And so I'm sure that I will need to add things as time goes on. But this is kind of the plan that I made and the seeds that I selected because of where we're at. Um, I'm really excited to try a lot of these this year because I'm hoping that they're going to do really well. Uh, in the past, I've just tried to plan the seeds off of what I know we like or what we've had in the past or what I've heard other people say is good, um, but they're not necessarily good for my climate. And like I said, we live in a really weird climate here. <clears throat> it's really dry in the summer, um, but not super hot, and yet the summer's really short. Um, and I have really rocky soil. <laughs> so I'm gonna try these things and I will be sure and post some um, garden tour videos this summer when everything gets nice and green again. As you can see, it's not nice and green today, um, but I think we're gonna maybe make it above 20 degrees. So that's good. But looking at all these seed packets and all the pretty pictures on them and how bright and colorful everything is, um, just makes me feel that much better about winter and that spring is coming and we'll be here before we know it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I do have a blog post that kind of outlines my whole decision process with purchasing seeds, like where I'm going to get them from and which kinds I'm going to get. Um, so if you want more information on that, be sure and click over to that blog post. And um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure and subscribe. I'm trying to do some more videos now. Um, I actually bought a camera <laughs> to shoot videos with, so um, I'm feeling all fancy. But um, yeah, be sure and subscribe and click the notifications button so I can let you know the next time that I publish a new video. I'll talk to you guys later.